Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Epic Gangsta Tales. Today, we got a real interesting topic. Um, we're going to touch back on the street gangs of Boston uh, and, and touch on two really major um, Boston street gangs, Columbia Point Dogs and uh, their never-ending war with, with, you know, lifelong rivals, uh, Roxbury's Orchard Park Trailblazers gang. Um, so, yeah, like I said, today's episode is going to be on the biggest and possibly one of the most vicious and violent, well-oiled, money-making street gangs Boston has ever seen. We're talking Dorchester's own Columbia Point Dogs, um, or more commonly referred to as CPDs. Uh, the, Com- the Columbia Point Dogs reside in the Columbia Point slash Harbor Point section of Dorchester, um, which, you know, they, they originated way back, you know, um, you know, when the high-rise projects were up that were crazy. Um, but, you know, still today, there's still projects over there and stuff like that, but it really, it, it's, it's over there and, you know, Columbia Point stretches all the way over from JFK and even over towards Dot Ave and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, they're... You know, the old, the old Columbia Point projects, like, like I was saying, um, were easily the biggest, baddest, and most grimy projects Boston has ever had. Um, you know, they were, they were reminiscent of the high-rise New York, Chicago type high-rises, you know what I mean? Uh, which there's really not too many high-rise projects, you know, in Boston in general. There's still some, you know, uh, but not like these ones, the old ones. If you look up, you know, pictures, if you check out the community page that, that I, I posted earlier, you can see a, uh, a lot more pictures and stuff like that, and uh, that go along with the video today. Check that out. Um, but yeah, you know, it was essentially it was a, a city within a city, if you will. You know, one way in, one way out. You know, they, they had their own supermarket, you know, etc. That you know, today we're gonna touch on the exploits and the never-ending war that they're still embroiled to to this day. Dorchester versus Roxbury, um, Columbia Point versus Orchard Park uh, Trailblazers, and you know, in Roxbury, the birthplace of uh, New Edition and Bobby Brown. That's where they're out of, that Orchard Park housing projects. And um, in fact, this war almost claimed Bobby Brown's life in a crazy incident back on September 28th, 1995, as Bobby Brown sat in his wifey, uh, you know, Whitney Houston and, and her Bentley with uh, bodyguard and childhood friend and known Columbia Point Dogs gang member, Steven Seeley. Uh, I believe they were sitting in the car you know, just kicking it near the the Orchard Park um, housing projects in Roxbury, and uh, someone walked up and uh, you know extended their arm and fired into the passenger side, striking Stephen Seely in the head. You know, as Bobby Brown, you know, said he ducked under the steering wheel like that. You know, if it wasn't enough to you know hit him up, you know, hit him in the head. He, he reaches in and snatches the giant, you know, big gold medallion, gold chain off his neck, you know, and, and dots off. Um, you know, Brown was luckily uninjured, you know, and, and was able to speed off. The, uh, the trigger man was an Orchard Park Trailblazers gang member, John, uh, street name Black Tibbs, and was sentenced to 27 years in prison for the murder of uh, Stephen Seeley and the attempted murder of Bobby Brown. Um, you know, crazy. The, the Orchard Park, you know, like we touched on, I touched on the Daryl Whiting episode. Um, the, Orchard, the Orchard Park Trailblazers wear the Portland, uh, Oregon Trailblazers hats and jerseys. Boston is a very unique city when it comes to street gangs. It's really, it's, it's, it's got a brand of its own where, like I said before, it's neighborhood gangs and stuff like that. So the Columbia Point Dogs in Dorchester, they wear the the Philadelphia Phillies hats and jerseys. The hats are really the big thing, the fitted hats. There's no Crips and Bloods and stuff like that. But it's, you know, the neighborhood gangs wear their hats. So Columbia Point Dogs wear Pittsburgh Pirates hats, Philadelphia Phillies uh, hats, Philadelphia Flyers hats, 
uh, that's their, you know, that's that's how you could tell, uh, you know, certain gang members in Boston and stuff like that. Uh, Orchard Park was the, the the basketball team, the uh, Portland Trailblazers, you know, hats, jerseys, etc. And you know, we'll touch on other stuff too because you know we're gonna touch more on stuff like this. Nothing recent and stuff like that. You know, always like I said, I, I, I try to keep everything, you know, uh, you know, old and, and out of out of his you know recent news so to say uh, but but you know just as interesting as boston organized crime with the mafia the irish mob street gangs too man you can't you can't ignore that stuff you, you, you'd be missing a, a huge fraction of the city's you know gang and organized crime history you know what i mean like and it gets glazed over a lot you know what i mean like you see the town you see stuff like that but never really too much stuff on on the uh boston gang stuff that city on the hill uh you know like the second season the season two they they touched it was pretty cool they, they showed stuff like that other than that you got that that goofy ass movie uh blue hill avenue which is more like a, a, a bad, you know what I mean? Like it's like one of them, like the ones you buy off the off the corner and stuff like that. You know, it's uh, but nothing, never really ever, you know. But but you know, like you could make a show on on Daryl Whiting itself. I mean, that that shit is, you know what I mean? Like and he he operated out of the Orchard Park um, projects as well. You know what I mean? The the, the city's got a huge huge, um, you know, black gang history and stuff like that and. Um, you know, just as much as the Irish and Italian mobsters too, we're, we're gonna bounce back and forth on, on both. Um, but another another crazy incident tied to either either gang, um, high profile anyways, occurred back in September of 2000. Boston Celtics legend and all-time great Paul Pierce was stabbed in a melee at the then Buzz nightclub. Paul Pierce was stabbed eight times in the face, neck, and back. Ba you know, bad. Um, punctured a lung. And, um, you know, luckily Paul Pierce survived. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, good thing he pulled through. You know, we, we at least won one championship 2008. We should have won more. You know, if they were healthy, we would have won more. You know, um, I, remember, I remember sneaking into the game with my, my buddy back in 2010, the year they lost snuck in game five you know like this is like right before i uh just like right after high school right before i went into the marine corps and uh you know we me and my buddy we used to sneak into regular season games all the time but game five celtics lakers you know snuck in and they won that game you know kobe versus P you know pierce it was just a, a he, he always had the hottest matchups he always had the you know what i mean like not to take away from garnett or, or ray allen or anyone like that but paul pierce not only had to, you know, he had to bring it offensively and defensively, so he had Kobe guarding him, and he had to guard Kobe, you know what I mean? Like, it was crazy, he sneak, snuck into game five of the championship, you know, just nuts. Kids being kids and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, um, but yeah, anyways, back to that, so yeah, he, he luckily, he walked away from that, um, but they, you know, allegedly it was three men who were tied to or a part of the Columbia Point Dogs, as well as being tied to the, tied in with acquaintances of the Boston hip hop group Made Men, which in, includes Benzino. Um, but yeah, Pierce was stabbed up. After Pierce was stabbed up, uh, you know, as he, as he laid on the ground, he, uh, he was smashed in the head with a champagne bottle. Um, it says in the court, the court documents from the from the case from the stabbing case back in 2000 um and if you want to see another example on stuff i'm not going to touch on i'm not going to touch too much on on you know personal stuff and, and stuff like that but if you go on to um it's a rapper from columbia point called 100 bands you go on there there's a song called hot n-word you know the bobby schmerda remix you go on there it's it's a you know brutal declaration of war and uh of taunting of, of orchard park by columbia point um rappers and and affiliates of, of all that you can look at that you can look at that song um there's another one, um, you know, they, they're sitting there, and that, that one, they're, you know, exposing 
paperwork on unrivaled gang members from Orchard Park and just, you know, just crazy, you know, way too much out there. And, you know, it ultimately came back to bite them in the end. We're going to get into that. Um, but another one is by Hunted Bands or Water Boys is Chirac, the Chirac remix. It's another vicious track that will go into details on certain events that transpired in that in the gang war. Um, check that out, you know, and, and after countless incidents and because of the money, really, that the CPD's organization was bringing in, which was crazy, by the way, you know, um, was, you know, the Columbia Point Dogs organization was, was complex and vast, um, but all good things come to an end, you know. Um, and back in June 2015, the walls and the feds closed in. 41 members and associates of the Columbia Point Dogs were arrested in Operation Rising Tide. Um, the arrests came after a two-year investigation targeted what the U.S. Attorney of Boston called the largest, most violent, and most feared organization in Boston. The arrests mean the Columbia Point Dogs leadership was effectively dismantled and removed from the community, a spokesman for the FBI said. Uh, the investigation has resulted in the seizure of, among other things, 31 firearms, multiple boxes of ammunition, uh, large amounts of heroin, cocaine, crack cocaine, oxycodone pills, actual oxycodone pills, and, you know, ridiculous amounts of marijuana, as well as countless drug paraphernalia, um, 15 vehicles, including a Maserati, um, and a Mercedes-Benz, an Audi, and approximately 1.5 million in cash, um, huge, I remember this, I remember reading this in the paper and stuff, seeing it on the news, you know, if you're from Boston or the surrounding areas, you, you know, you know, you should remember this, it's a huge, huge thing, um, over 500 federal, state, and local law enforcement took part in Operation Dubbed Operation Rising Tide. The gang started out of operating out of the, the Columbia Point Projects in the Dorchester section of Boston back in the 1980s, eventually trafficking drugs from Boston to as far as Maine. Um, I think it even stretched even farther than that. They had ties down to like Georgia and stuff too. Um, crazy, just a, a huge huge thing um you know and um and then the uh the Orchard Park Trailblazers gang was also hit hard by the FBI as well uh 15 arrested 14 guns this was back in 2017 um the the big raid for the Columbia Point Dogs was in 2015 two years later the FBI hit, you know, usually it's like every two years they hit a different neighborhood or projects or whatever. And, um, you know, they hit the Orchard Park Trailblazers gang hard back in 2017. 14 guns, 15 arrested, and a three-day long, uh, FBI-led three days of, of raids in the Orchard Park housing projects, which are still up to this day. Um, you know, tied to that organization, Orchard Park Trailblazers, and, you know, these are two of the biggest gangs in Boston, two of the, you know, really old, you know, long history, a long-standing feud that's still hot to this day, you know what I mean? Um, but this has been another episode of Epic Gangsta Tales. Um, enjoy the rest of your week, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for rocking with the channel. Um, you know, we're going to keep going and see where this goes. Um, but yeah, you know, like we always say, please like, comment, share, and most importantly, guys, subscribe. It makes everything that much easier, um, you know, and, and we're going to continue putting out content. So thank you guys for rocking with me. Take care.